Tired of spending a ton of money on painting tools like this and then your paint still not looking good? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about the tools that you need to make your paint job look professional. Coming up. Hey friends, welcome to Adulting with Esther, the show where we talk about the things that you don't learn in school. I'm Esther and today we're going to be talking about the tools that you need to be able to make your paint job look really professional. If you're new here, welcome. Hit that red subscribe button down below so you can be alerted when we post new videos. I'll break the tools down that you'll need into three different categories. Tools for prep, tools for repair, and then tools for painting. Now, if you're like me, you've heard the saying that painting is all prep work. And until you actually invest the time doing the prep work properly, you'll never believe that. But once you do, oh my God, it will make your paint job so much easier. So check out these tools that I'm about to recommend to you. I promise you they're all down in the description or you could probably find them at your local home improvement store like Home Depot or Lowe's. The first part of prep work is making sure that your work surface and area is clean. What you're going to need for tools in order to do that is tools to protect your items. So you're gonna need a drop cloth or some plastic. If you wanna go the free route, you can use an old sheet. Just remember that a drop cloth like an old sheet isn't waterproof or paint proof. So if you spill an entire gallon or maybe just a small quart of paint on it, it is going to soak through and damage whatever you have underneath it, be it a couch, hardwood floors, or even carpet. Also, depending on what you're painting, you might even elect to go with some brown paper. If you're choosing to go with paper or plastic, you're also gonna need some tape. This will help you um, adhere it to your different surfaces. Painter's tape is recommended because it doesn't peel your paint off. Now that your surfaces are protected, you need to get them clean. When you're prepping a surface for painting, there's two different types of cleaners that you wanna use. Either TSP, if you're using latex paint, which is the typical one that you, most people buy when they go to their home improvement stores, or you might wanna use mineral spirits. Mineral spirits is the surface cleaner that you'll use if you're using an oil-based paint. So make sure you're using the appropriate cleaner for your surface. In addition to this, you're also going to need a bucket. You're gonna need some running water and you're also going to need a sponge or a cloth. I prefer the yellow sponges with the green backs. I think they um, last through the job a little bit longer. When we were using rags at our own job, we actually had to throw quite a few away just because the walls really needed to be scrubbed. As for you, you wanna make sure that you're wearing appropriate attire for painting. Make sure that you're wearing a shirt, shoes, and pants that you don't really care about. If you're going to be painting with a roller on a stick that's gonna be above your head or on the ceiling even, you might even wanna consider wearing a hat. And if you have glasses or goggles, wear those too. The little splatters off of those rollers get everywhere, especially in your hair. And nothing's worse than being in the shower and having to pick out each individual strand because you were just too lazy to wear a hat. So plan ahead. And speaking of planning ahead, you should protect your hands too. A lot of these chemicals are really dangerous. I think it's better off if you buy the heavy duty cleaning gloves like the yellow ones that you can get either at the Dollar Tree or at your local supermarket or even at your home improvement store. The thin little plastic gloves don't hold up as well when you're using the strong chemicals like TSP. Especially if you really have to rub your surface aggressively, you might find that you just rip holes in them repeatedly and the amount of regular gloves that you go through compared to a heavy duty pair might not have saved you the money that you thought it would because of how many you had to go through. So let's talk about repair. When it comes to repairing your walls, we're talking about holes and cracks and all those little imperfections that you might have put in there or someone else put in there. Depending on the type of damage that was done, you might need different tools. But a good rule of thumb is that you're going to need some type of spackle. Make sure that it's flexible and on the container, it talks about being able to fill into the cracks and expand with heat temperatures. You'll also need a putty knife to be able to put the spackle into the cracks and holes that you made. Remember, all these tools that I'm recommending are available down in the description or at your local home improvement store. If the hole or crack in your wall is large enough that you can see the actual drywall, sheetrock, plaster, or the cardboard, you're also going to need a sealant to protect the wall from any sort of environmental hazards like water in your house. And on top of everything else, when you're done with all of that, you're going to have to be able to sand it and make it look like the wall you want it to. I recommend an electric sander, but sanding by hand works fine. Usually when I'm doing my walls, I'm doing quite a large surface. So an electric sander saves me time and energy and helps the job get done quicker. You'll also need a variety of grades of sandpaper. The higher the number, the more fine it is. 
Finer sandpaper, or the higher number, is used for finishing work to make the surface look more smooth and professional at the end. The lower number is the more coarse grit sandpaper and is used for really roughing down surfaces. If you want it to look professional, you'll probably need two or three. Even though I'm using an electric sander, I still like to buy mine in large sheets and then I can cut them down. I found that it's a better value and more economical. Okay, so that's everything that you need to be able to repair your walls. Now let's talk about the actual painting. <laughs> Overwhelmed yet? <laughs> I get it, me too. But hey, if you're getting value out of this video so far, don't forget to smash that like button down below and help support the channel. When it comes to actual painting, the best thing I can recommend is to make sure you read the paint container of the paint that you use. The paint that I always recommend for any job is Bare Murky. No, I'm not sponsored. It's just one that I found works really good. In fact, my favorite thing to do is use the Sherwin-Williams or the Benjamin Moore paint colors, bring them to Home Depot where I get my paint from, and then have them put it in the Bare Murky paint. Now when you're using Bare Murky paint, there's one thing that's great about it. It has a one coat guarantee. I hate painting a lot, but I also hate paying overpriced for it, which is why I end up doing it myself. I've found that Bear Marquee really does give me the best value. You also get a better value if you buy in the larger containers. The quart size costs about $30, and a gallon, which is equal to four quarts, costs about $50. Are you seeing the savings here? But even more so, if you know that you need five gallons or more of the same color, you can buy it in a five gallon bucket for only $200, saving you even more money. So really consider doing the math on how much paint you'll need before you start your project. Another thing that I love about Bear Marquee Paint is they have that one coat guarantee like I talked about. Well, one time I used it and one coat was not enough. I was going from a darker color to a shade of white. So I called them, I saved my receipts, and after a short conversation with the customer service representative, they ended up giving me a $150 gift card so that I could buy three more cans of Bear Marquee paint to do my job appropriately. So while it did end up taking two coats, they definitely held up their end of the deal and have made me a lifetime customer. When it comes to paint, there's multiple different sheens. The rule of thumb I like to think is how much stuff is going to be getting on the walls in this room and will I need to be washing it off? The spectrum of paint goes from flat all the way up to high gloss. Flat paint is what we use on the ceilings for the most part, and it's nearly impossible to wash. In fact, just touching it is going to make a mark. Whereas high gloss is very easy. It's almost like plastic on your walls, and you can use soap and a sponge, and it's super quick and easy to clean. So think about the traffic and maybe the little sticky fingers in your area before you paint it. Once you've chosen the type of paint that you want, now you need to choose your tools. Different types of paint require different types of tools. However, with the Bear Marquee, I found that it's always best to have a 3 8 inch nap roller to a half inch nap roller. Again, I buy this stuff at my local home improvement store or online at Amazon, and all these tools are down in the description for you to find as well. But using the appropriate roller for your walls and for your paint will make a difference. Now, if you're starting to think this stuff is really adding up, and it is, I get it, painting isn't cheap. Make sure you check out my next video in this series where I'll talk about how you can actually reuse your paint rollers and how you can best clean up your paint brushes to make them last four years. And I'm serious, y'all. I've used some rollers to paint thousands of square feet, and I've used some brushes for over nine years, and they still work perfectly. You can find those videos up here or down in the description. Once you've got your paint at home, you're gonna to need to open it. You can do that either using a flathead screwdriver or using a paint key. You'll also need a tray to pour your paint into. Over time, I've learned it's better to also have a liner for my paint tray. That way, if I'm in the middle of a job and I need to switch paint colors, but I know I'll go back to the other color later, or maybe I just don't feel like washing it out right now, I can switch the liners and have a new prepared paint tray ready to go without all the hustle of all the cleanup right at that moment. They range from 25 cents to $1.50. I think it's worth your time and money. If your ceilings are higher, say eight feet or more, you're probably going to need to invest in an extender for your paint roller, as well as a ladder, or at least a chair that you're okay with getting some paint on, or have the ability to protect it in the event that some paint drops down while you're working. The roller extender that I like to use is adjustable because I never know if I'm going to be working on a high, high, high ceiling or just an eight foot ceiling. So make sure that you invest in something that can work for future jobs as well as the one you're working on today. 
Now, if the amount of paint you're working with is only a quart or a gallon, you probably won't need this tool. But if you've invested in a five gallon bucket of paint, that's not something that you can carry around with you while you're walking around your house, unless maybe you're the Hulk. So to counter that, I like to use a little paint cup. This one's great and I like it because it has a magnetic spot for me to stick my brush on, as well as a handle for easy handling while I'm working on cutting in with the ceiling, on trim, baseboards, crown molding, or wherever that you need to be painting in a tight space. And the last tool that you'll need to paint, yeah, I know, are you overwhelmed yet? Now this little brush right here, I can tell you I've had for about four or five years and I've taken really good care of it. So you can see the bristles are still nice. They're not frayed. The metal has a little bit of paint on it, but it does its job. I recommend this brush if you really want to get a professional looking paint job on your work. And here's why. The angle on a brush allows you to get close into the corners when you're cutting in around windows, your trim, your baseboard, or really any sort of tight space. The two inch width, again, helps you to fit in those smaller spaces. When you're using a brush, it's not really about covering surface area. It's about being precise and being accurate. So make sure you get a brush that feels like it's a good fit for you. And on that topic, holding a brush can kind of hurt your hands, especially if you're painting a larger home. So I like one that has a flexible handle. Again, it also makes it better for fitting into tight spaces. Do you realize that this is an important thing yet? For example, yesterday when I was painting my bathroom and I had to fit behind a light fixture that I didn't feel like removing, I was able to bend it and use, you know, some common thinking skills to be able to get the brush in there where I otherwise wouldn't have been able to with a wooden handle. Another thing that I love about this brush is that it uses two types of bristles and the bristles at the end are a little more fine and it keeps the porous paint up here within the brush. And so when I'm painting, again, it helps with accuracy. So if you don't buy anything in this video, I think this is the only thing that you really need to make sure that you do. All the other things will definitely help with your paint job and make it better. And I've been painting since I was about seven years old. And trust me, I've learned a lot of things through my own inventive ways of being cheap. But I can tell you that this thing has been a game changer and I will never go back. The other stuff, it will help you. It will make your cleanup easier, it will make your paint job easier, and it will definitely make it look more professional. But painter's tools are only as good as the painter. So make sure you check out my whole series on how to paint your home and make it look like a pro. And you can find that again down in the description or up above in the cards. If you want any of these products, you can check those links out in the description as well. Thanks again for watching. If you got value out of this video, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you can get alerted when we post new videos. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I loved hanging out with you and I can't wait to see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.